Well, hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another Self-Publishing Insiders with draft to digital uh, Not just draft to digital this time. This time, we have brought along a friend. Uh, we call him Friend of Business, FOB. Uh, this is Will Degas from Find Away Voices. We're going to be talking about audiobooks, uh, but also, in particular, Find Away Voices' new marketplace. So welcome to the show, Will. Thank you so much. Good to see you, Kevin. Good to see you, Mark. Kevin, I just saw you a couple of weeks ago at Nink, but Mark, it's sure been a did. while, so it's 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 nice to be here on the show and love talking about audiobooks. Mark was there in spirit. I was there yeah. in spirit. I was I was listening to you from afar. But <laughs> uh, Will Marketplace, what a what a remarkable new endeavor! And you just announced that last week, wasn't it? Or, or was yeah, it it's still weeks? really fresh. So if 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 listeners here haven't heard about it, don't feel bad. It's still really really new. We just launched it uh, the first phase of it last week. Uh, along with uh, the announcement, and I was on the Jonah, Jonah Penn's Creative Pen podcast and been doing some clubhouses and stuff. Uh, but you want to just jump in? I'll tell you right about Marketplace. Yeah, jump, jump. All right. Uh, you're talking to, I'm I'm green on this. I, I know next to nothing about it. Uh, just what you announced on Twitter is all yeah. I know. So Awesome. You get to instruct me. Okay. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So, so Find A Way Voice has been around for a little over four years now, right? And obviously, we distribute books. I like to tell a, lot of, tell a lot of people that we are like the draft to digital, but for audiobooks. It's the simple <laughs> upload once. You can distribute anywhere. It doesn't matter where you make your book, right? You don't have to produce with us to distribute with us. But we've had production services from day one. And we've done, we've done the making books part the exact same way since the day we've launched, which is a very personalized experience, a very hand-holding experience. If it's your first audiobook, it's a really, really great way to go through it when you're about to spend call it 1500 bucks and you want to make sure that like I don't trip up and and do something wrong and and get a crappy audiobook at the end and have to pay this right so so we've taken this approach where hey we'll help you find the narrator we'll assign you an agent to help you through the production process if the narrator needs a nudge we'll nudge him if there's a problem we'll we'll get in the middle and mediate and like we'll make sure everything goes goes great right so marketplace is a second option to make books now. We're, we're that 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 one's not going away. If that's still good for you, we're still here, um, and that's and that nothing's changing about that. But if you are an author, maybe like Mark, who has made lots of audiobooks, or has a narrator that he trusts uh, and wants to bring it to us, or you know just uh, you know uh, knows the process, uh, we can slow you down in that other way, right? Because we are handholding and and we're sitting in the middle. And Marketplace is a way to open this up with a set of tools that are free from Findaway Voices to let you run a production yourself on our platform and still be and still stay on the rails. So we don't have casting services, but for the first time ever, we're going to open up our entire narrator database so that you can search, you can filter through, you can listen to samples at your own pace and, and audition narrators. And then there'll be a whole set of production flow tools to make sure after auditions, you're going to sign a contract and then you're going to do the extended sample and then you're going to have a review process and then you're going to you know, go through this process in the way that we know good audiobooks get made. We've taken a lot of experience and made a lot of audiobooks and then we've built software tools around that to say, what would this look like today? If we were to build tools today, not 10 years ago and layer on top of them, right? Today, what is the ideal production flow between an author and a narrator if we're not involved? And so we've built those production tools uh, and the coolest thing is we're giving them away for free. There's no find a way markup to use them. So if you if you and a, if an author and a narrator uh, want to come to find a way voices and run the production through us, it's not going to cost you anything extra. You'll still be able to use our distribution services, but you actually don't even have to use our distribution services. We're giving this as like a great tool for the industry because we want to grow the whole audiobook industry. And so if you've been looking for a place to make audiobooks, that doesn't serve a single retailer, but serves the entire audiobook industry. That's what we've built here. It sounds glorious, man. Because uh, it sounds <laughs> sounds similar to a, a, the service that shall go unnamed. Um, although I have no problem with it. It sounds sounds like a better version of ACX is what it sounds like. Um, and that's not hard to do, but you guys even... <laughs> Given, well, it, it was not easy to build. I'll tell you that much. Oh, I like, bet. We've, we've been working on this for a long time. We've gotten a lot of input from a lot of narrators and authors. We've done user testing. We've we've looked at what works on our process, and we've used all of that to build. It's it's been no simple task. I mean, we've been working on this for over a year, and yeah. I have been so excited to tell people about this, but we've had to keep it secret. <laughs> so, 
So uh, yeah, last That's week was rough. finally the the weight off my shoulders to finally be able to start telling people what we're doing here. Finally. So I love uh, I love that you put the control back in the author's hands and you've given them choice. So now uh, or soon because because I know it's not ready for authors yet, and I'd, I'd like you to talk about that in a second, but. Um, when I go to find away voices, which I can do through draft to digital, I have my mm -hmm. ebook set up, I click a button, it ports all my metadata over. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I have the option of having your awesome project managed process, find me a narrator based on what you guys know about the industry, based on the expertise that I've leveraged several times, or I could right now I could do that, or I could, you know, I, I have a narrator I work with on one of my series. So. I just have the, the files he's provided for me and I just upload them directly and I'm good to go. But then soon I'll have the option of saying, well, maybe I, maybe I want to go audition for, for this other project. I need a different voice. And, um, and I know you did help find me a couple narrators that I loved. So thank yeah. you. But you're now welcome. you're opening that up. So there'll be three options. Now, as an author, can I ask this question yeah. is, well, anyone with a really crappy microphone is just going to be able to be a narrator on find away voices or is there some sort of <laughs> some sort of curation where you're like well you have to be a certain standard right yeah that's a great question so uh, marketplace is much more of an open market right okay. um anybody can sign up for find away voices marketplace and put their samples out there uh and and set their rates you know everybody's an independent contractor they can choose okay. whatever rate they want there nice. for the productions that we do you can be confident that nobody's going to be on a casting list that isn't trustworthy, that isn't going to meet quality standards that we've vetted. But Marketplace is going to give you a lot more freedom to just pick anyone in the in the world. So there's going to inherently be a little bit more risk there for authors. Okay. But we've worked really hard on on building up a set of trust tools. So it, you know we're thinking strategically about Marketplace a year ago. We're thinking what are the core pillars of what we want to build, and trust and transparency was one of the big pillars for us. We don't want somebody to just be able to sign up uh, and say they're Morgan Freeman, right? Yeah. Like, like there has to be a little bit more uh, trust and transparency there. So a couple of the things that we're doing is uh, at the end of every production, the author will be able to rate the narrator. The narrator will be able to rate the author. So both sides are going to have ratings and reviews. Okay. We're going to show you how long any narrator has been signed up on Find Away Voices. We're going to show you whether they've been used for a production that we've trusted them for in the past. If they've okay. if they've been hired by us, uh, either for an AudioWorks production, which is our high end studio division, or an Orange Sky, which is our publishing division, or through our managed productions with Findaway Voices over the last four years. So you'll get to see that Findaway has trusted them. You'll also get to see how many minutes they've recorded on our platform, right? Oh, so they nice. can't just say like, "Hey, uh, well, I've done ten books for Findaway," and it's like ten one minute books, right? <laughs> so like, trust and transparency is is key there. Also elevating things like how often do they deliver on time? 95% of my projects were delivered on the due date or before. Those kind of transparency metrics are built into the very core foundation of Marketplace because we are opening it up to the whole world and we want authors to make informed decisions when they're making these expensive, expensive decisions. That's very I cool. love that. So you're also allowing a new narrator who has skill but maybe doesn't have the previous experience they they have an opportunity to really use this platform and leverage it to 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 get a foothold in the industry provided they do it in a professional fashion then they can rise up right absolutely this is it, for for a narrator who has no work samples right they may be very talented they may be a, an actor who is who is out of uh you know in between jobs there and has good studio set up it, they just don't have a backlog of audiobooks they may be great even in that scenario, it's tough for them to get our attention on a casting list because we really focus on choosing talent that we know and we trust and we vet them based on their past experience. So it's really it's really hard to get a foothold in the industry in that way. Marketplace, we really hope, is going to grow the industry, both for narrators and authors, giving everybody a lot more opportunity. Well, you know, there's, assume... there's like 7 million ebooks in the world, yeah. and there's only half a million audiobooks. There is so much more potential to grow this industry and to do that, we're going to need more great voice talent that that is able to get a foothold and get started in the industry somehow too. So we're uh, we're all about that. So we're, we've got a couple of questions coming in. Uh, yeah. Let's pop this first one up. It says uh, from Michael, and I'm going to pronounce your name as Brain, but you can correct me, Michael. Sorry if I got that wrong. But uh, he asked, "Will you offer an option like ACX does, where you can split revenue with narrators, say fifty-fifty, instead of having to pay up front?" Great question. 
So the royalty share stuff is coming down the line. It's not going to be there at launch because it's a little more difficult. But I'm actually trying to th I'm, I'm thinking about this a little bit differently, which is I'm thinking about royalty shares more on a distribution side than mm -hmm. a than a production side. And so there will be a way to kind of hack this in the system earlier than than uh, than we officially support the full end to end thing, because what it's going to be what it's going to look like, I think. And I'm going to give you like, you know, because because we're all friends here uh, and we're live, I'm going to give you a sneak peek into kind of my brain here. But this is not an official announcement and this could absolutely change. What I'm thinking about us changing royalty share to would be more of a any two parties. It could be two authors. It could be an author and a narrator agreeing on a royalty split. 50-50, 60-40, 70-30, 90-10, whatever it is. If both parties agree to it, I'll split the royalties that way. And there's no minimum term. It's just going to continue as long as both parties don't want out. So if one party wants out but the other doesn't, that's too bad. It's going to continue. But if both parties get the little nuclear key and turn them at the same time... <laughs> then the royalty share kind of explodes and it goes back to the rights holder only. What that means is you can make a side deal on the production side and say, hey, you know, on Marketplace, lower your rate for me down 50% and I and then we'll work it out on the distribution side. As opposed to it being coupled where the production side says, okay, you are at X percent and then I have to enforce this distribution side thing. I'm going to, I'm thinking about really putting a, a you know, cutting that in half and thinking about those two things very separately. Um, that could change. That could change. That's kind of where I'm thinking about with, uh, sure. with royalty share. But to answer the question, there's not going to be anything that specifically addresses this at launch. At launch. Okay. But yeah. you do have voices, um, voices share program, and you have had that in production for a while. We do. Right. Yep. Which is sort of, uh, it's not paying nothing up front. Can you explain that, that just for people who aren't familiar with it? Yep. The way we do what the way we do royalty shares today is a hybrid royalty share. So we, we cut the production cost in half. So 50% of what you would have paid. And then you split 20% of the royalties with the narrator. 20% is our cut, which is normal. 60% of the royalties to the author. And that's a 10 year term that the author has the ability to uh, buy out of for an extra 100%. So let me walk through the buyout option really, because I, I think it's important to have a buyout option because the other player doesn't have a buyout option and that's putting a lot of people in a really bad situation. Um, the way it works, say the book was going to cost a thousand bucks, you would pay 500 bucks up front for voices share and then you would start splitting royalties. If you had a thousand dollar royalty month and the, uh, the narrator would get $200, Findaway would take $200 for their fee and the author would take home $600. And then at any point in that 10 years, if the author wants out of the royalty share, they would pay an extra $1,000, the original 100% cost of the audiobook, bringing them up to 150% total. So yeah. that's $1,500 all in. The narrator obviously would get to keep all of the royalties they've shared up to that point, but then get a bulk payment of another 100% of what they would have made. So we think, we think that's a pretty fair uh, arrangement. I don't think I've ever we we, don't, we haven't haven't had a single uh, author actually blow up a contract yet. So, um, but that will probably be deprecated to this. You know, obviously we'll honor those contracts, but going forward, we'll probably just offer this this new structure when that comes out. Oh, very cool. And that that may in part uh, address some of what our our next question was about. Uh, Richard Stevens says my previous audiobooks were published through Audible's royalty share. I'm now looking to go wide. I have a new audiobook already narrated, wondering how I go about using Find a Way to Publish without, in all caps, without incurring the 30% surcharge that I was told I, as the author, would have to pay up front. Can I use Find a Way to upload and distribute through without extra without the extra charge? Okay. Let's unpack this because there's a I'm couple gonna, interesting things here. Drop oh. that off the screen so we can see it. Do you need me to pop it back up there? I might Sorry. need it back up just because okay. I, I want to make sure go. I don't miss That's it. That's a long one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and move Will up top and put me down there. Right <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, thank go. you for the question, Richard. This is a really interesting one. Um, I actually, I would love, I don't know, can we ask a follow up question and see if he can? Yeah, let's ask. This, so your books are still in a royalty share program, but you want to get them out of royalty share to go wide? Or are you looking at reproducing them? Because a 30% surcharge, surcharge thing is a um, is a production thing for us right now. So because we have all of the infrastructure today for the casting agents and the production assistants and all of the, th the contracting and everything that we do in the middle, it's actually just as much work for us to manage a production where the author and narrator already know themselves, or, you know, already know each other versus one that we pair up. 
So we do we do charge a 30% upfront fee uh, on top of the the pre-negotiated rate if you and the narrator come to us for the managed production. So when well, when marketplace launches like, that will go away. It looks like he said this is a new one and it, he yeah. did say it's already narrated. So he has all the files. And he just wants, I think, correct gotcha. me if I'm okay. wrong, Richard, but he just wants to upload the files to find a way. Is there going to be a surcharge for that? So there's never been a surcharge for just uploading finished files. If you want to work with the narrator on our platform to produce the files, that's where the 30% comes in. So maybe there was a misunderstanding there at some point, but we've never charged anything up front to distribute ever. Uh, and in fact, you know, even if you tried to pay us, there wouldn't be a way to do it. <laughs> um, so really the 30% is if you and the narrator want to make the book on our platform and use our yeah. production services and pay through us and have us be the, in the middle of the contracting phase. So I, um, I don't like for there to be problems without solutions, Will. So if anyone wants to pay, find a way up front, my PayPal account is, is at your service. Oh, <laughs> nice try. Nice try. Sorry, sorry. No, that is a joke. Please don't send money to me for find a way, boys. <laughs> now, the previous books, though, going through Audible's royalty share, it is pretty difficult to get out of those royalty shares. And if you yeah. are interested in taking those books wide, I don't have clear advice for you other than you need to contact ACX's support team and see what your options are. It's been a, my understanding is there's been a few different versions of those royalty share contracts, uh, and it might depend a little bit on when you had those. I will say books. they're getting pretty good because I actually just peeled um, my Kotler books out of uh, ACX. Uh, all I had to do was get the permission. We, Me and the narrator had to come in together and say, it's fine, and then we can move them out. Um, so they're, they're getting pretty good about that. Even if you're still in that like seven year deal with them. So yeah. Okay. The, quite, the answer then is ask and make sure your narrator is on board. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you can still get a hold of your narrator too. It sounds like hopefully if it's the same, same narrator for these next books, you're still in contact. I, with I did have a narrator pass away, which did make life very, very challenging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so How did you manage but, uh, that? How did you manage it? Uh, you had to go through their estate and there has to be, there's a whole lot of paperwork that has to be done uh, saying that they, that they own the rights uh, and then they sign over the rights and you, know, you have to cut the deal with them. It's very, it was very uh, challenging, but it, yeah. you know, it could be done. So it does, uh, does emphasize that you should probably, if you're doing a partnership with someone, you should probably have some sort of paperwork, legal paperwork that, that you know, outlines what you, what happens when one of you dies. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good so, point yeah not not, not, not fun to think show. about but yeah it's yeah. not fun but yeah i would also just use this opportunity to caution anybody from entering a seven-year royalty share deal today yes the industry is moving so fast there's yeah. so many people who even even just a couple weeks at nink uh kevin i was talking to so many people there who had book one of their series locked in royalty share yeah. and that makes it so hard to go wide even though they've made great decisions since they were they're they're still paying for that one bad decision because, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. If you bring me books two through five in the series, there's not I'm like I can never get you featured. There's no merchandising opportunities for you. What retailer would want, you know, to to advertise book two as the series is the first right. one that they can get. Yeah, exactly. Um, you it need really to just re limits you. Renumber those one through four. And then there's a prequel that's only available in Audible. Uh, that's actually that's not a bad idea and that is uh for some people when there are more standalone ish books and they're not yeah. as uh reliant on the sequential nature uh mm -hmm. i have recommended that in the past it's worth yeah. you know updating the cover and updating the metadata and making you know reordering the series right so that book two is now book one yeah 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 it's still not ideal though right <laughs> it's not ideal of course right but it's 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 the same old challenge if they won't release the book then that's you have to take some kind of extreme measures if that's the plan you have. Like if you want to, you know, if you want to have those those deals. Yeah. But yeah, you guys. Can are, I um? Are can I? Uh, Richard had a follow up question, uh, which I think is important about our wonderful partnership between Draft to Digital and Find Away Voice. Is it this one, Mark? Yeah. Can okay. I bring a finished file to Find Away? And uh, yes. Um, where on the site can you do that? Well, Richard, if you have a Draft to Digital account and the ebook version is already published. There's a little audiobook tab there. Click on that audiobook tab and it'll ask if you want to port the metadata so you don't have to re enter, you know, some of the information. Obviously, the narrator information will have to enter it, find a way, and you have to change the cover from the rectangle to the square, which is custom for audiobooks. Uh, but when you do that, it'll port you over to Findaway Voices, create an account for you if you want. 
and also, you know, save you some keying in, right? Because I know, Richard, you write hundreds of thousands of words every month. So you don't want to be typing in metadata. You want to be back on the next book. Um, and then you can choose, hey, find me a narrator or I got everything I need to go. And there's two different options. It's very easy. I love the way Find Away Voices makes that so easy. I love the way Draft Digital and Find Away have partnered that way. Okay, yeah, so great partnership. Over. Yeah. <laughs> so I just dropped a link in the um, the uh, comments and I'm going to add it now to the screen. Uh, but it is findawayvoices.com slash D to D. If, if you need to, if you need a direct URL, uh, it, it amounts to the same thing. So you can do the easy button from, from draft digital. If you're distributing with us, if you're not distributing with us, you can always go to them through that link. We appreciate it. If you go through our, that's our partner link. I don't think will minds. No, I love so. it. We have a great <laughs> partnership in this. The, the other thing this link gives you, either when you go through the draft to digital dashboard or if you sign up with your account this way, if you do choose to produce with us in the future and you you heard about those casting services that we do where we go through our whole database and we find the narrator that's right for you, we normally charge $49 for that service and we waive that fee for you if you come through draft to digital. So definitely sign up there. It, it does not cost you anything. There's no what a good like, partner does. That's what a good good partner partner. Now, well, you talked about merchandising and promotion, and I bet you that there's so many listeners that their ears perked up and they went, merchandising and promotions? Can I get merchandising and promotions through Find Away Voices? Yeah, there's. we have great relationships with our, our retailers. It's one of the benefits of, of having direct relationships with all of the 42 retailers that we, that we work with. Uh, and I have a, a team dedicated to merchandising, and every month we're sitting in front of those um, those retailers like a like a publisher does, pitching their new catalog. And we're going through for some of the best new releases that have come through Findaway Voices, things that are on sale, um, and pitching those. So uh, so those some of those are reach out opportunities where you know maybe Apple will say like, hey, we're doing a carousel in two months that is themed on Halloween. And so we might go out and, and solicit some discounts from people and, and say like, hey, would you like to participate in this? They need it to be in this price point. In which case, it's it's kind of a don't call us, we'll call you kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, some are more open calls, like every year for in June. June is audiobook month, so we get like a ton of space on retailers to promote uh, audiobooks. And we generally do more open calls for that of like, hey, submit what you would like to have included there. And sometimes we can get two or 300 books on some retailers featured in special lists, which is great. Um, and then, of course, there's things that are more retailer driven, like uh, Chirp deals, right? Where you would apply directly on the Chirp site, uh, the Chirps website, the BookBub partner dashboard is where you do it. And you apply for that promotion. Then you hear from them whether or not you get it. And then uh, aside from merchandising, you can run a sale through Findaway Voices on either Chirp or Apple at any time you want. If you want to just do a limited time discount, take your $15 book down to seven, uh, nice. you know, or, or something like that um, to run a special sale. Maybe you discount book one when book five is released or something like that. Uh, and another really good tip, uh, everybody your ears listen right now this is a great one if you do get a chirp deal on book one of a series we've seen a lot of success with you manually going in and discounting books two three and four depending on how long the series is maybe just book two um so that if your chirp deal is at a buck 99 maybe you set book two yourself to 299 and then yep. book three is 599 and what we're seeing is People will find book one and they'll grab more than that in their cart right at one, right away, as opposed to getting book one, waiting until they finish and then maybe converting at full price to the next one. We're seeing uh, a really, really good results in, in that strategy. I'm just going to throw in here, by the way, that if you if you get a deal and you're setting up a sale like that through uh, for your audio books, you should do the same on your ebooks and you can schedule price uh reductions for, for a temporary time through draft digital. So if you're distributing through us, you can set up a little promo deal. I'm just going to throw that in there because that would work really well together. Yeah. So <laughs> it, I, it does. It works both ways. We have, even before chirp launched, we could tell when somebody got a, a book bub featured. Deal, yeah. Right. Because more yeah. attention would go on the ebook and some people just prefer the audiobook, and and it goes both ways. So they're both think of them both as, you know, curation engines that are reaching consumers you wouldn't have normally reached right. and picking their interest because of the price. But once they get there, uh, you know, I, I certainly look at BookBub featured deals and, and Chirp deals as kind of editorial recommendations. Yeah. And maybe I don't want to buy right then, but maybe I want to get the ebook on. Maybe I only read ebooks, uh, nonfiction. Maybe I only do audiobooks for fiction or something like that. 
you just yeah. never know. And, and it doesn't hurt to. That's to the way that works, steps. by the way. Right. Like that's, that's what I do. I'm sure everyone here does. Like I listen to all the nonfiction stuff on audio for some reason, because it's, <laughs> I do too. It's easier I, to get I'm through. a big nonfiction reader and I do almost all of that um, on audiobook. However, yeah. I know a lot of people who will only do nonfiction in print or only do a nonfiction in E so that they can make notes and they yep. can review them easily and they can make annotations, which is a lot more in, you know, important in the nonfiction world. So I've, I, I experienced it the opposite way or the same way as you, Kevin, but um, I've met a lot yeah. of people who do We're it. We're auditory. Way. We're yeah. auditory learners. <laughs> so our own Lexi Green uh, asks, uh, marketplace sounds like an exciting opportunity exclamation point. She used the exclamation point that I gave her last week, by the way. Uh, is there a projection for when that might be going live? Yeah. Great question. We, we kind of skipped over this. We moved, moved past marketplace yeah, we and we didn't talk about how it's launching. <laughs> right. Yeah. So when I said it was announced last week, we're actually launching in a couple different phases. So what we launched last week was just for narrators. We have about 15,000 narrators on our platform. And think of them as having old profiles on our platform. We have the information that we needed to be able to cast them and categorize them and, and sort and filter ourselves. But we were much more ambitious on the tools that we wanted to give authors when we were opening up the whole database. A lot more data we need to collect in a structured way. So we're having narrators for the next few months update their profiles. And we've seen hundreds already do it just in the first couple of days, which is, which is awesome that narrators are jumping on this. But they're, if you're a narrator, log into your Findaway Voices account and you'll see, you won't be able to miss it, the, the option to upgrade your profile. You'll be able to add in a whole bunch more information to customize the information and then actually publish it and get a, a public link, which you've never had on Findaway Voices before. Yeah. And uh, it's it's you're going to be really excited when you see how good your profiles look. It's like um, it's night and day compared to what the industry standards are. We've really leapfrogged uh, everything here and they're beautiful. And so I encourage every narrator that's listening or every author who knows a narrator, let them know uh, yeah. to upgrade their profiles because we need that critical mass of upgraded profiles before we can launch the author tools so that we, we don't want to launch and have an author ever find like just a couple search results. We want thousands of narrators in the database upgraded yeah. on those new profiles before we launch. So we're hoping the author tools will be ready to launch before the end of this year. Excellent. And I'm uh, not going to give a more specific date than that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys uh, know how these things go. I do. I do. Um, Okay, Mary Houston, I'm going to say. Uh, and if you're from Texas, it's Houston. <laughs> uh, so uh, she asks, in author groups that I'm in, there seems to be a growing trend of indie books being claimed and produced into audiobooks by someone other than the author, Oof, uh, those using ACX. Do you have any safeguards in place to prevent that from happening on your platform? Um, yeah, this has been a big problem lately, and it's caused a lot of headaches for people, yeah. especially people who are outside the area's uh, where you can even have an ACX account. Like if this happens to you in Australia, you're not even allowed to sign up for ACX to claim your own books, which is really, that's, that's really unreal. tough. This whole system is really difficult too. Um, we don't have anything like the claiming system, right? Because the whole claiming system um, works based on the ebook records. Now, you cannot submit a book to ACX unless there's a corresponding ebook. You want to go audio first or audio only? Can't do it. So, and obviously we're an audiobook company. We don't have uh, the records of every ebook to claim against. Not that we would go that route anyway, because uh, it's a little too easy to just search for any book and just say it's mine at the click yeah. of a button. <laughs> yeah. Um, what we do is we have a human QA team that's looking for certain patterns that we that we have identified uh, for fraudulent behavior at the submission and resubmission of every single book. Um, we have uh, a pretty robust uh, payment profile setup that will flag us to any suspicious activity or request extra information like government IDs and stuff from people who uh, trigger certain flags. Um, so we, we, do, we do some work there. There's more coming. Um, but I think much of the problem stemming from ACX's thing there is the $0 upfront ability to make an audiobook, And that is not something that's going to happen on Findaway Voices. I don't believe in the $0 upfront. I don't think narrators should assume all of the risk on a production. Uh, so we're never going to formally support that. And so I think that's going to help a lot too. But obviously we're not naive. We know that there's a lot of fraud in the industry. We've seen a lot of fraud try to come through Findaway Voices. We catch yeah. more than you would believe. And I know we've talked about this too, Kevin. And, and, and you know, there's a lot of tools that you're like, boy, I'd rather be, I'd rather be building something that's giving yes. a lot of value to authors than building something that's just stopping the scammers. But we, we put a lot of time and effort into that. 
uh, and we'll be watching the platform really carefully and adapting quickly as we see patterns emerge. Yeah, you had so one. If you're cool listening and you're a particular. scammer, back off. Yeah, that's We're gonna right. find you. We're gonna come after you. It's gonna become <laughs> find a scammer voices. Um, yeah. So uh, Alyssa, who works with us, uh, said talked about this, and I I wanted to pop it up here because it's not just indie authors who are getting hit by this kind of stuff. This was a scam that actually impacted the narrator more than anyone. She said she saw an article about a guy who was hired to read Dune and got duped and didn't get paid. <laughs> so, yeah, that it's happened. It's such a short novel, too. I know, right? I'm like, you know, you dupe me to read like Old Man in the Sea or something. Don't dupe me to read like the epic tome. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's, that a, is that's heartbreaking. a harsh one. That is uh, why we want, we want um, reviews on both sides, though. We want yeah. narrators to be able to review authors and authors to review narrators. So if you're a narrator... And you're picking up a book from somebody who has no review. Obviously, everybody starts with zero <laughs> reviews. But like, yeah. we want those trust factors and transparency to really be key on, on the platform. It breaks so, my heart. And I, I, would, I would hate to see that happen. Will, yeah. uh, because I've worked with professional narrators through Find Away Voices, do I, as an author, will I have the ability to go in and, and give them a, a five-star rating because I loved working with them? Would that be a useful thing for authors to do? Even if you haven't produced with them? Uh, no, no, no. I, I've platform? produced with a few different... Um, a few different um, uh, narrators through Find Away Voices that Find Away Voices found me, but I don't remember being able to rate them, and I'd love no, we, to. Yeah, we never had yeah. that. We never had that before. We had kind of our own internal tracking and stuff. But I love that idea. I think that's a great way to seed some reviews early on. And we obviously have all that data. We know who hired who because uh, yep. we sat in the middle of all those productions. So I'm going to take that idea and run with it. And we have a couple months before the tools launch, and that would be a great time to to build some stuff around that. Thanks for the idea. I love it. All right, we'll send you the bill. <laughs> um, yeah, speaking of that, I mean, you guys are always working on something new and I know you can't, you can't reveal, uh, much of the secret sauce, uh, going on, but you know, are there some things that you're excited about coming up that you can talk about? Like we put a lot of this? energy into marketplace. You yeah. know, I, 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 I see marketplace not as just this production feature, yeah. right? That is the first launch from marketplace. But if you think of marketplace as a new platform, I think it's really going to be the center of the audiobook industry for creators. Yeah, I, I, I see this. We're starting with with productions, but shortly after, we're gonna we're gonna take on some more complex productions, dual narrator, duet productions, even full cast. We want to be able to support those things. I want to bring in other professions too. Mark, if you're oh. self narrating and you need somebody to do mastering, why should you have to go to Fiverr for that or Upwork oh. for that? Like we should be we should really oh be God. the hub. You're talking my Fantastic. language. Yeah, yeah. we yeah, want to empower everybody. So much time. Yeah, exactly. We want to empower everybody who wants to make an audiobook to come up with the best, best experience possible. And we're just going to keep building tools. And the other ones are a little more far fetched. So I'm going to I'm going to stay with those easy to conceptualize ones. But so but pulling truly, it directly out of our brain as we hear it in the voices we prefer. <laughs> um, <laughs> think of Marketplace as a uh, as the future of Findaway Voices and the future of the audiobook industry. We are going to build so many tools around this and features around this. Marketplace is a huge area of focus for us. And it's and it's really strategically core to the direction that I want to move find away voices. So uh, this is just the first of many launches. We have a lot of really cool ideas up our sleeves and there's a yeah. lot more to come. And obviously, you know, there's, there's always new partners on the horizon. There's always more opportunities for distribution. We're never going to stop thinking about that more. Uh, you know, people have been asking us forever about international pricing support. We're working on that kind of stuff. We want to have more integrations with books to read and have it easier to find your links everywhere. Like there's all kinds of stuff that we want to do and that we're not going to stop innovating in those ways either. The reason we've gotten to this point is because we keep building, you know, great products and keep, keep building great features that people want. Uh, that's not going to stop. Yeah. That's only going to accelerate. Uh, I have to, I have to put, uh, give kudos to you and your company and the team because for the, the productions I have done myself, every single time I go to master a file through Adobe audition, um, Wes has provided such amazing step-by-step -step video yeah. tutorial. And because I'm not a pro at this, right? I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. um, I Every single time I master an audiobook, I go through his steps step-by-step-by-step. By step by step, and, I, and I just, I, I was like, thank you, Wes, so much for creating this really uh, comprehensive, even for relative beginners way of, yeah. if you want to do it yourself, it's going to take some work, but here's how you do it. So thank you. Yeah. So much. it's a it's a fantastic resource. We we should have just put that thing on masterclass.com and, and retired because that do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's so valuable. People would pay for it. But 
you can also see marketplace as being a hub for education, right? You can yeah. also see this as being like we talked earlier about this platform, the springboard for new talent getting into the industry be the perfect place to focus uh, educational materials too. And we've we've obviously seen success with things like the, the Wes's video, the tutorial on mastering that you just referenced. And there's a lot more things that we can do to really help bring up, you know, we're, we're incentivized to grow the entire industry. We're yeah. not here to grow a single retailer. That's not what we're doing. We are growing the entire audiobook industry so that everybody wins. And it's so fun to think about all the tools you can build when you have that mindset. A uh, couple of questions here. The first one, I want to pop up real fast. Gil Jackson says, hi, team. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> Will, go back to the beginning. No, okay. I'm sorry. That's not, there's no, no he, You're being silly. He says there's no he's going to go back to the beginning. <laughs> I know. I know. I just had to throw that out. So that's the way I read it at first. I'm like, start from the beginning. What are you, crazy? Okay, so Sharon Jansen says, uh, I've heard about authors hiring narrators. So we, we addressed this a little bit earlier, but... Uh, uh, we can come, we can swing back around. I have heard about authors hiring narrators with an agreement for royalty split instead of upfront payment. How does this work? So that's on the other platform. That's on yeah. ACX. We don't do any zero dollar upfront work on Find We Voices. I don't think we ever will. I don't believe in that model. I don't think it's a healthy model for the, the industry. Um, but to answer your question, the way it works on ACX is you pay nothing upfront. The narrator assumes all the risk. Yeah. The narrator does the production and delivers it to you at their expense. And then you split royalties 50-50 for 70 years. So half the royalties go to you, half the royalties go to the author or the narrator. But you have to be exclusive to Audible that entire seven years. So you're at the 40% royalty rate. So you're each making a 20% royalty rate. And it is sometimes difficult to get out of those agreements. Yeah. Um, as you know, if obviously if the narrator doesn't want out, there's no getting out of the agreement. Yeah. But also at the end of those seven years, you don't own the audiobook. You you have the right to take down the audiobook, but the narrator owns the recording, the performance, and you own the source material. So neither one of you can do anything with it without negotiating a rights right. transfer at the end. And then obviously, when you pull the book down at the end of those seven years, you lose all your ratings and reviews on Audible and you have to submit fresh. So it's really it's it's uh, in my opinion, and this is maybe a little too brutal for some people to hear. It's a really short sighted decision. You want to own your this is an asset that you are going to leverage in your audiobook business in your author business for a while. You want to own that. You want to own that and have the rights to make a move when the industry shifts. Uh, and don't be beholden to a single retailer uh, who may not always have your best interest in mind. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a Faustian bargain you strike and you end up with you end up holding basically nothing at the end uh, for all that work. If, if the two of you do decide, uh, you know, you're going to go forward or whatever, and then it, it becomes even more complicated later. Uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't do it. Um, that again is ACX, not find a way, find a way That's has right. their own process. And you can find a, uh, usually find a narrator at a pretty good rate. Uh, that, that is generally affordable for most authors. I think, um, you know, the cost of producing audiobooks is always going to be a little on the high side for some authors. Uh, mm -hmm. but you guys are working on ways to kind of mitigate that. Right. Well, we want to give people more options. That yeah. cheaper is not cheaper is not always the better business decision, right? You know, I was I was talking to a couple authors at Nink a couple weeks ago. I know I keep coming back to this, but they got rock star narrators and they paid a lot for them. Yeah, but they attribute the majority of the success success of their audiobook to the audience those narrators brought with them. You know, like that's right. There were people there who said uh, R.C. Bray. You know, I would pay as much as rc bray wanted to charge me for the book because i know he brings an audience and i know it will end up being worth it there's some narrators out there like that so it's not it's not always about driving the price down but it's where you yeah. are it in your in your career and where you are as far as what you can afford to do um is obviously a factor yeah uh I, but i would say just to put the seven-year commitment in context finally voices has only been around for four years uh and when we launched chirp didn't exist Right. Google didn't sell audiobooks. Apple was still exclusive with ACX. Um, we we launched with like 17 partners and we have 42 today. We have changed the audiobook world in just four years. And if somebody was, you know, doing a royalty share on that day, they still have to wait three more years. Just wait to see what we can do in three years. Yeah. This industry is moving so fast. Seven years is a lifetime. And you don't want to lock yourself into that kind of term. Now, Will, can you add, uh, can you talk a little bit about, because I know in just the last year, people expected with the pandemic, with lockdowns and people not driving to work, 
mm -hmm. there was an expectation that, oh, people listen to audiobooks in their cars. <laughs> but I heard you recently share a stat that indicates that people have still continued to listen to audiobooks and it's growing, but not necessarily in their cars. Can you yeah. talk a bit about that? <clears throat> yeah, I mean... You know, real talk here, when the pandemic hit and and even I who had an hour commute each way to work was now all of a sudden working from home, like I was nervous. I was like, oh, boy, what is this going to do to the audiobook industry? That That is where I listen. Right. That is where my personal habits uh, fell. And so I was very, very nervous there. And we did see we did see a pretty significant drop in those first couple weeks when the lockdowns happened. But then it bounced back and it settled at a much higher baseline than it was before, which shocked all of us. The APA stats, which is what you're you're mentioning there, the Audio Publishers Association, they they do um, some statistical reports every year, which are always interesting to read, and they found that there are a ton of people who are just sitting in their home with headphones on, listening to audiobooks. This is their leisure time, this is their TV time, but they're they're doing it with audiobooks instead as their escape. Um, and you know, after asking around, I mean, like, you know, trying to find some people in my life who do this, it's like, oh crap, like. A ton of people do this that really? I know. I just didn't even know it. Yeah. If I, so yeah. I'd encourage you to even like ask around to your family and friends who you know listen to audiobooks and ask them where they listen. There's a lot of people do it while they exercise, whether on the treadmill, whether on the bike, you know, um, or just like sitting at home listening. So we really saw listener habits adapt and shift a little bit last year. But the baseline is like more people are, are, are reading and listening than ever before. That, so, I, I got a question for both you guys. Yeah. Uh, do you listen to audiobooks at? 1x regular speed or do you speed it up like 2x or 1.5 or whatever uh rarely do i ever listen at 1x so it's a minimum yeah. of one and a half but if the narrator is really slow i can easily hit two times and and i'm fine because that allows me to read faster because i'm a slow reader yeah <laughs> i i am different between fiction and nonfiction. so when i am doing nonfiction. I find 1.3 to 1.4 when the app allows that kind of fine grain control. I love it. Okay. That's the sweet spot for me. Um, but if it's fiction and the performance is really like part of the reason that I'm picking it up and enjoying it, then I got to listen to it at one X. I got to, I got to follow the narrator's lead and trust their performance there. But if it's really 1.4 X all the way, baby, that's right. Yep, yep. Lexi. <laughs> that is the sweet spot for me. Mark, my head would be spinning at two X. I listen at two X. Really? Yeah. Um, and it's it, it took a little bit to get used to it. But one of the things that's happened while we've been doing the whole van life thing is, you know, Karen and I have discovered that we can only talk so long before we start getting on each other's nerves. <laughs> and uh, oh, I almost lost my mic there. Um, and so I'll pop that in. There are so many books I want to listen to that I decided I would try 2x to see if I could kind of speed up the consumption. And it's, it, it, once you get used to it, it's it's fine. I mean, it. It's clippy, you know, it's very, yeah. it's like listening to an old timey radio guy uh, for like 10 hours, but, <laughs> but it, you know, you, I pick it up, I, I retain it. So interesting. Yeah. So uh, Dan, Dan Wood popped up, says uh, 1.5 to 2X, you monster. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I just, I want to read more. I want to consume more. I mean, I have subscriptions to both Audible and Kobo. Uh, yeah. And so I'm going back and forth between the two platforms uh, and and listening to more audiobooks than ever before, you know, walking the dog, going for a run, washing the dishes, even just walking around the house, making breakfast or whatever. I've got the headphones on and I'm listening to, to podcasts or audiobooks and it just allows me to, to, to consume more. And I find that I still retain this stuff, especially, um, yeah, there are some, there are some performances. <clears throat> I agree with you, Will. Uh, I think Lincoln and the Bardo, like that was a multicast performance. Yeah, because of all the voices and stuff that that was one I probably I think I listened to at regular speed. But I'm I'm the kind of person who's looking for the fast forward button on people's foreheads when I see them in person. Yeah, so you get that way. <laughs> it messes with your brain. Okay, listen, I, we got like a minute left, and I want to make sure we get this question from Ian e. Kelly on YouTube. Uh, they say I have two years left with my split royalty contract with ACX. When the seven years expires, can I pull it down, reproduce it, and list it? on find way voices uh if you buy the rights from the narrator like i mentioned before my understanding and, and you really should check with your specific contract and acx's support on this because i 
I do not know what every single royalty share contract looks like. And my understanding is there have been some differences between contracts over the years. Yeah. Uh, so this is not legal advice. This is not policy advice for ACX because I'm not ACX. So you should check with them. My understanding is at the end of the seven year term, you are able to pull it down, but you don't own the production. You need to get that the rights from that production from the narrator at that point. And if hopefully they're willing to deal with you to give that to you at that point, you absolutely would be able to resubmit it to ACX non-exclusive and submit it to us, or you could submit it to us and we'll send it everywhere. Um, we're not all or nothing. So if you want to upload a book to us and uncheck ACX, so you go direct there, that's totally fine with us. We're happy to, to help you with distrib distribution everywhere else. But what I would say is if you do plan on reproducing it, like your book, like your, um, like your thing says, uh, you actually don't have to wait till the seven years expires. The royalty share is for that production. And you cannot put a second book up on ACX, but if you are going to reproduce it anyway, you can make a new production at your cost and distribute that wide anytime you want because you assign an exclusivity contract for that production, not the source. Interesting. Contract. That's the first time I've heard that. So that's expensive. interesting. Yeah, it's an expensive yeah, solution. It's expensive. But, it, but if yeah, you're planning that... on doing it anyway, um, you actually don't have to wait another two years. Interesting. Yeah, because they, they make you Everybody think. Here. Yeah, they make you think <laughs> that um, you're exclusive. Like you couldn't. You could not produce that book elsewhere, but you're right in the language of it. That's that's true. Uh, that's again, check your contract. Check, check your terms. Contract, I am not. Right. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving you legal advice here. So you, that's you should, Will Degas, everybody. That. He's an attorney. Uh, <laughs> he is uh, giving you legal advice right now over the years. No, no. Uh, yeah, I always check your contracts. And if you have an attorney, which by the way, you don't. If you need uh, legal advice on things like that, you could use a a service like um, uh, what's the um, LegalZoom.com. You can actually pay a very low rate to have some <coughs> someone review. Sorry, your contract. So uh, it's usually worthwhile. Um, okay, so that is going to wrap us up. Probably just in time. I'm starting to choke. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, but Will, thanks so much for hopping in. You've actually I've learned a lot uh, about uh, everything you guys are doing. And I thought I already knew a lot. So <laughs> <laughs> well, we got some exciting stuff ahead of us, too. I love thanks for having me on. It's been way too long. I love this. And the the thank you for everybody who sent in a question during this time as well. Like that makes this this is like so much more valuable to everybody, I think, to get everybody's questions out there and answered. And I would love to come back on again in a couple months when we launch this tool for authors to just talk about it again. So hopefully right, we can make that happen. It. Yeah. It's a date. We'll do it. And uh, uh, we'll we'll figure out other ways to uh, help push this around. So, uh, Mark, did you have any last minute questions or anything no, you wanted to I just want to say thank you, uh, Will, so much for uh, great insights into this platform. Always a pleasure, guys. All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Of course, the URL currently at the bottom of your screen, findawayvoices.com slash D2D, -D, will get you to Find Away Voices. Uh, and then you, where you go from there is up to you and your dreams. Uh, but also make sure that you are doing other fine things such as subscribing to us on YouTube uh, and on Facebook. If you go to youtube.com slash draft digital or facebook.com slash draft digital, you can like and subscribe and click little bells and all kinds of things to make sure you don't miss out on stuff like this in the future. Uh, but heck, just type any URL slash draft digital and see what it gets you. Uh, you, you never know. Uh, no, not, not any URL. Just but... any, any URL. <laughs> well, okay. Let's limit that to some, uh, not, let's not go to the not safe for work uh, sites. So uh, be sure you bookmark d2dlive.com because that's where we'll give you a little countdown for uh, each of these live events. We've got another one coming up. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it, even though I haven't locked it in, but we should be chatting with Honor A Quarter uh, next week at this time. So you're going to want to tune in for that. Uh, if you haven't met Honor A, I love her. She's one of my favorite people. She's a lot of fun to talk to. She's so fantastic. Yeah. We're going to have a good time there. All right, everybody. Thank you for being a part of today's Self Publishing Insiders with Draft Digital and Find Away Voices uh, and all the skulls on Mark LeFave's shelves. So. <laughs> We will talk to you all next time. Take care.